SAT math is really pretty manageable. I'm so used to sharing bad news with you that even I'm surprised that I said that. Here's why it's true. The math content on the SAT is focused on just a handful of topics. The three most important ones are algebraic simplification, linear equations, and quadratic equations. Those three topics make up literally 75% of the content on the SAT math test. In this five minute version, let's learn the one that's on the test the most, linear equations. On a scale from one to 100, how comfortable are you with the equation of a line? If your answer was less than 114, watch and learn. Lines and their equations are not too hard. You just need to know every single thing about them on the SAT, like everything. And then you need to use that comprehensive knowledge about 15 times per test. You'll also want to think about linear equations both mathematically and practically. The test does its best to tie math to the real world. Okay, let's dig in. Lines represent a relationship between two different quantities or variables. For example, even though you don't pay bills yet, but get excited, you could probably guess that there is a relationship between the amount you pay for your cell phone plan and how much data you can use each month. That's a linear relationship with a positive rate of change, aka slope. As the price goes up, so does the amount of data that you can use. Here's another linear relationship, this time with a negative slope. Mentions of the Kardashian family in the media versus my desire to use the internet. The more often the Kardashians show up in my feed, the less I want to be online. Based on this negative relationship, I'm fairly close to moving to a desert island. We just talked about positive and negative rates of change or slopes. Slope is the quick visual way of describing rate of change. If one quantity goes up, the amount of the bill, as the other one goes up, the amount of data you get, the relationship is positive. If one goes up, the introduction of Chloe's new baby perfume, as the other goes down, my desire to be a member of society, then the relationship is negative. That explains the meaning of positive and negative slopes, but what about the value of the slope itself? Well, we compute slope as the change in the y values of two points divided by the change in the x values of the same two points. Here's another common value we use to describe linear equations, the y-intercept. I know you know what that is mathematically, I, I can almost hear you yelling, it's B, but what is it in the real world? I like to think of the y-intercept as the starting point. Here's another linear relationship. You open a stand at the local farmer's market. It costs $10 to have the stand each week, and at the end of the day, you pay 5% of your revenue to the market. If X is the amount of revenue you do in a week, then you could write a model of your expenses as E of X equals 10 plus 0 0.05 times X. The Y intercept there, the B, is the 10. It's the part of your expenses that you pay as a starting point. You want a booth at the farmer's market? No problem. You just need 10 bucks. It never changes either. The flat fee does not care if you make $0 or a million dollars. The flat fee is $10. If the y-intercept is the starting point, the thing that isn't changing, then the slope is the thing that is changing. It shows you how two quantities are moving together. In the farmer's market example, the relationship is positive. As you make more, the farmer's market people make more too. You sell a $1 carrot, the market makes five cents. You sell a golden carrot embedded with diamonds for $1 million, the market makes 50 grand. When it comes to real-world problems featuring linear equations, think of your y-intercept as your starting place and slope as the representation of how the two variables change relative to each other. That's just about everything you can do with one line. Things get really fun when we introduce a second line. When you have two or more equations of any kind, you have what's called a system of equations. When the equations in a system have a point of intersection, that's called a solution. I mentioned those two technical terms just because they could show up as math vocabulary within an SAT problem. When the two equations in a system are both lines, there are three different ways that they can have solutions or points of intersection. If they have different slopes, they will intersect exactly one time. That's it. They have one solution at that point, and that's it. See you later, other line. It was fun getting to know you a little bit. Non-parallel lines have one solution, but what about parallel lines? If two lines are parallel but have different y-intercepts, i.e. one of them is below or above the other one, then they will never intersect. So different parallel lines have zero solutions. The last possibility is that you might have two lines with the same slope and the same y-intercept. Essentially, they are two lines with the same equation. 
how many times will these two equations, equations that are basically the same as each other, intersect at every single point? So, an infinite number of times. That means a system of equations with two lines can have one solution, no solutions, or an infinite number of solutions. Lines are parallel if they have the same slope. But what about perpendicular lines? Think of the way that two slopes could be the most different, the most opposite from each other. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So for example, positive four and negative one fourth. I think that's it. Everything you can do with a line, all in five-ish minutes. You are now ready for 15 of the 58 math questions on the SAT.